Good evening, everyone. Hi. Good evening. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. All right, I'll go ahead and start with the roll. Uh, Jamari Adams. Nadia Bell. Nadia Bell. Um, Samaya Blunt. Here. All right, got you. Um, Tierra Brady. Tierra Brady. Antonio Brown. DeAndre Burgess. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jamise Burns. Ebony Chavis. All right. Um, Jada Ellerby. All right. Um, Charnay Ewing. Charnay Ewing. Abby Feath. Abby Feath, Alexis Fields. Here. All right. Brandon Foster. Here. All right. Uh, Jalen Good. Jalen Good. Sydney Graham. Sydney Graham. Tavia Hawley. Kiswana Houston. Kiara Jefferson. Aaliyah Johnson. Here. Robert Jordan, Robert Jordan, Sierra Knox. Here. All right, got you. Kevney Lomax. Here. All right, got you. Elisa Maldonado. Elisa Maldonado. Sincere Mays. Sincere Mays. Nasir McDaniel Moore. Here. Got you. 
Uh, Brandon Merritt. Here. All right. Terry Miles. Mary Monroe. Here. Got you. Aaliyah Moore. Here. Got you. Ariel Moore. I'm here. All right, got you. Uh, Daniel Moore. Aaron Orr. I'm here. Got you. Ramia Parker. Here. Got you. Um, Asia Pinnock. Kiara Porter. All right. Uh, Raven Rayner. Raven Rayner. Gabrielle Rodriguez. Here. Got you. Quadasia Sharp. Tamara Sheely. Uh, Sheely. Ariel Sherrod. Here. All right, got you. Simone Tunstall. Here. All right. Jeremy Vick. Carrie Watkins. I'm here. Got you. Talika Yates. And Alana Young Maddox. All right, so let's see here. All right, um, this evening, uh, we're uh, gonna briefly see if you guys have questions about chapter 10, which is pretrial or procedures. Um, then I'll discuss briefly um, because next week or, or uh, tomorrow night uh, or tomorrow morning, uh, my chapter 11 and chapter 12 lecture will be posted. Um, so you, that'll be your reading assignment for this week. Um, also next week, even though we don't have a scheduled Zoom, um, um, I will be, um, well, let me see. Uh, I, can, I can do a little, uh, go over the quiz because uh, it's gonna be next week. I can go over tonight, but I'll still be, on, I'll still be here, at least uh, sign on next week if anyone has questions regarding the quiz. Um, but there will be a quiz up um, next week. Um, so next week, quiz two will be up. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, any question that did everyone uh, look at or at least uh, see my lecture for chapter 10 and wasn't understandable? Any questions? No, sir. Okay. Um, so uh, pretty much self-explanatory talking about the pretrial uh, pre procedures in chapter 10 of the textbook. Um, so, you know, the, the book is really... Um, I like this book for one, it has online resources where you can kind of go in and, and, and test your knowledge. Um, that's what I like about all SAGE publication books. Um, also, um, I think it's very in-depth. It, it doesn't just tell you what something is and what it means. It tells you where it came from. So um, for, all, for all of you guys that have been doing the reading, you see that it doesn't just tell you how the, how the court system came about. It gives you a history, where it came from, what part of the Constitution, Article 3, and all this stuff, uh, where stuff comes from. Uh, so that's a good thing about this textbook. But uh, Chapter 10 talks about pretrial procedures. So now we're to the point we've talked about, mo well, we've talked about from chapter, let me see, from chapter one all the way through nine, it's been pretty much about how the system works and where the, and the history of the system. I see Tamika Yates out of there, um, or the, the history of the system, and also the players, the people in the system uh, that, that take part in, uh, you know, helping to move cases, and um, they're part of the system. Uh, now in chapter 10, we're, we're now moving on to what the procedures are. So I, I got you, Tamika, I, I, I got you. Um, but um, 
but we're talking about what what the procedures are, what the steps are, what happens in in the trial process, uh, pre-trial. Uh, most cases are handled in the pre-trial phase because, um, as I know, I, you heard me say in my lectures, uh, ninety plus percent of criminal cases never make it to trial. Uh, most cases are pl either played out or dismissed. So the most important thing. Uh, that happens in the process is the negotiation process pre-trial. Um, if a case is at trial, that means the sides couldn't come to a resolution uh, without going to trial. So um, you can think about it, think of a trial as being a war between two countries that couldn't sign any type of treaty or couldn't get along. Uh, so the, the, the only resolution left was to go to war. Uh, that's essentially what a trial is. Um, and of course, in a war, um, somebody always loses, and sometimes it's not just somebody. Sometimes everybody loses, depending on what type of case case it is. Uh, you know, if, if if the trial turn the trial can always turn out the wrong way because, of course, um, trials are not a perfect science, right? Um, you don't have a jury that gets it perfect every time and knows exactly what's going on. So that's just one of those uh, things that happens uh, in the trial process. Uh, sometimes they get it wrong, but in the pretrial process, and that's really the most important thing about what I do, and that's really where the bulk of my work is as a defense attorney, is pretrial. Um, I want to get and gather as much um, exculpatory evidence um, or mitigating facts as possible um, to discuss with the prosecutor. So, you know, maybe we won't, maybe I can talk the prosecutor into reducing the charges or possibly dismissing the charges. Um, to see if we can finish the, finish the case out without it having to go to trial. Um, because in, in going to trial, the risk is all the defendant's risk. There's not really any risk to, there's not really any risk, risk to the, uh, to the uh, prosecution. Um, because at the end of the day, um, you know, if, if there's a victim in the case, that victim has already allegedly been harmed. So um, if they go to trial and lose, it's not like it's, necessarily hurting the prosecutor. Of course, they want to win, um, but the prosecutor and the, the prosecuting witnesses or the victims don't lose anything because a defendant wins or a defendant is acquitted. Of course, they don't get what they want. Of course, you know, they, they want this person to be convicted if that's the right thing um, or the just thing. But um, outside of that, they, they, they've kind of already lost if they're there, if they were the victim of a crime. Um, but with the defendant, uh, the defendant has everything to lose by going to trial. So the, the risk is the defendant's. So um, the prosecutor is playing with house money, but the defendant is is betting uh, his or her own money. Uh, so everything they have is on the table, um, including their freedom, right? Um, so in the pre in pre trial procedures or in the pre trial process, um, that's essentially where we're trying to see if this if a case can be disposed of without going to trial. Um, I am a trial attorney. That's what I do if I have to. But honestly, in my line of work, I might have, I have way more district court trials than uh, superior court trials um, in, in, in North Carolina. Of course, of course, North Carolina, we have district and superior. Um, and a district court is essentially misdemeanor court. Um, and, uh, and superior court is felony court or misdemeanors that have been appealed uh, up to uh, Superior Court. Um, so, of course, a Superior Court, you get a jury trial. So, I don't, we don't, I don't do a lot of jury trials. I'm prepared to do them. I know the process. And then, you know, of course, we, as attorneys, I've been practicing now for over 13 years. So, I know how to do a jury trial. But in the everyday practice, um, that we don't always do a lot of jury trials. So, there, you know, a lot of lawyers don't, aren't doing jury trials. Matter of fact, a busy lawyer might do might do four jury trials in a year. Uh, and that's a, that's a that's what I would call a busy lawyer. And then it depends on what, so then it depends on the subject matter of those jury trials. If it was a heavy, uh, you know, a capital murder or, or something, uh, you know, a rape or kidnapping or arson or maybe even some type of uh, drug trafficking case, um, that one trial in and of itself can, can sometimes suck resources out of a law firm and, and be something that takes a long time and takes a lot of time out of an attorney's uh, uh, schedule. Um, so because of that, it does, you know, a lot of, lot of cases like that, um, you know, uh, that your average attorney, either your busy attorney that says, hey, I'm going to trial on everything, 
isn't probably isn't going to try try more than four cases in a year, more at least more four, more than four jury trials a year. Now, district court is different because it's kind of everyday court. The calendar is quick. It's misdemeanors. If we don't agree right there, we can just go to trial. The average misdemeanor, you know, there's no jury selection in, in uh, superior, I mean, in district court. So uh, the trial process is quick. Both sides can go. The, uh, the, average, the average district court trial, which is a bench trial, so there's no jury. It's the, it's the judge just being the jury and, uh, and the, uh, the trier fact, the jury and the determiner of law. Um, and, and, and evidence. So um, it's just the judge and it's us arguing our case. Of course, the case, the state goes first, we go, uh, then we have closing arguments um, and the judge has to determine guilt or innocence. Uh, in cases like that, because you know, I may, we may, uh, the average attorney has more of those a year. Um, of course, this year is different because court's been postponed and, and the Rona is out here. So it's, it's been different, but I usually average um, I usually average maybe uh, really weird. Maybe on on in a, on a, in a busy year, I might have seven district court trials, if that, um, because usually in district court, because we're dealing with misdemeanors, and the cases are not screened and and, and don't have as high of a priority. Um, it, you are less likely to have a trial in your cases in district court only because it's like, yo, bro, it's a misdemeanor. You know, a lot of times in their um, in misdemeanor court, they have there's so many ways they're trying to keep things from going to trial. Most prosecutors have policies where if a person's a first offender uh, and they qualify as a first offender, they can get an opportunity to get the case dismissed or uh, they, they offer uh, mediation in certain cases. So there are a lot of things that happen to keep um, misdemeanors from going to trial. Now, of course, sometimes they, they go to trial. So because misdemeanors vary in levels of seriousness, you know, you have everything from your misdemeanor marijuana possession um, all the way up to a serious misdemeanor uh, assault or something like that, where there's uh, in, where there's injury inflicted, where then at that point, um, now someone's going to be hurt, want to be heard, and um, if th those are more combative, so they may go to trial. Um, but for the most part, um, a lot of misdemeanor cases, just like felony cases, don't go to trial. Um, so on, I spend more of my time as a defense attorney um, going back and forth and negotiating with DAs, whether it's a felony or a misdemeanor case. So of course, in the negotiation process, I still have to gather evidence, talk to my client, and prepare because I essentially, I'm pre without necessarily presenting all my legal arguments, and that's the one thing about being a, a defense attorney, sometimes we have to give up our strategy um, to, to keep from going to trial. So sometimes it can burn us because we give up our strategy um, up front, which we normally we would do if we're negotiating. So if I can, if I'll put my best case forward in front of the DA and tell them why they shouldn't go to trial on it, why they should dismiss or offer my client a lesser charge or uh, at least open up negotiations, um, if I if I'm opening up my case to do so, um, so, if they don't, if we end up not agreeing, that means now I'm going to trial, and the district attorney already kind of knows what my theory of the case is and what I'm going to argue, uh, so they can kind of prepare. Um, now, of course, I, you I automatically know what the district attorney's case is going to be that my client's guilty of what's charged. So I kind of already know what they're going to argue. I may not know the facts and who's going to say what. Um, but that's always that's always a risk we take in the negotiation process pre-trial. Um, so it, it just is what it is. Um, so of course, um, as a part of the pre-trial process, um, of course you have your first appearances, your all your pre-trial appearances in front of the court, um, and that's pretty much a lot of what the book talks about. You know, the, the client being um, arraigned and, and brought before the court. You know, asked whether they're going to plead guilty or not guilty or whatever. Um, and then other pretrial hearings. Sometimes we even have uh, pretrial motions to suppress or certain motions to dismiss or keep evidence out. Um, if a person's in, if a person's in lockup, there may be some type of pretrial bond motion or bond modification motion to see if we can't get the bond reduced to get my client out of jail pretrial. Which you know, because of court and being closed down, I have to do that in a few cases this week. Um, so I gotta try to get my clients out of jail because the cases keep getting postponed because court get, keeps getting shut down. I don't want my client to sit in jail um, when it's not really necessary um, for a long time because court 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 uh, keeps getting closed. 
Um, so that, that's a that's a form of a pretrial motion, a motion to um, a motion to uh, change or adjust the bond, what we call a bond, a bond motion. Uh, so there's a lot of motions, a lot of things that can be done pretrial. Um, so that's essentially the pretrial process. Of course, I discussed it in more detail in the lecture. So if you have not yet done so, uh, go ahead and uh, look at the lecture. Of course, do always do your reading. Uh, so I, I give pretty detailed lectures, but I can't I can't give you everything. I can't spoon feed you and like literally read the book verbatim. Uh, so reading it, reading is up to you guys. Um, but I, I do try to give lectures where I touch on the main the, the important main points. Um, so uh, are there any questions about chapter 10? Okay, uh, having heard none, I'm assuming there are none. So um, uh, good. Okay. Um, so uh, next week, um, or your, your re the reading assignment that will be posted tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. is uh, chapter 11 and chapter 12. Uh, what we'll do, um, I think what I'll do next week, um, because next week on the 27th, so next, what's the day? The next, today's Tuesday. Next Tuesday, you know, see. Yeah, next Tuesday, um, quiz two will be posted. Uh, it's just like quiz one, it's going to be uh, 15 questions. Um, and it's going to only be uh, on chapter seven through 12. So it's not going to be completely cumulative. So it's not going to be one through 12. So the first quiz was like chapters one through six. Uh, the second quiz is going to be chapter seven through 12. Um, so you don't have to worry about remembering stuff from earlier chapters. Uh, so you only have to worry about knowing the information from chapter seven through 12 for quiz number two. Um, so uh, definitely read chapters 11 to 12. Um, uh, what I'll do, uh, we, will, we'll, we will go ahead and have a Zoom next week, even though it's not in the schedule. Um, I think it's important that we have it because you have a quiz that'll be up at the same time. And I, I think most of you, um, I, 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 you know, I don't go over the quiz, but I'll talk about what's on it tonight. But I think it would be fair if I at least discuss chapters 11 and 12 for you guys, um, even though I've already given um, lectures. I know you guys may want to have questions about it before you jump into the quiz, even though the quiz will already be up. Um, the quiz will be up on, uh, from, on Tuesday. I know a couple people came in late. I think I got Miss Pennick. I got Miss Pennick who just signed in. Yates, I'm here. Let me check. I got you, Miss Yates. Who else signed in? Uh, Alana Maddox, Young Maddox. J yes. Jalen Good. Sydney Graham. All right, hold on. Sydney Graham, got you. Jalen Good. Yes, sir. Got you as well. Anybody else come in late? Sign in late. I know it's like three or four people, so I think that's it. Um, let me check something. So I'll let you know exactly what when the quiz is going to go up and go and be down. Okay, gonna be up on the twenty seventh. Let me see here. It's gonna be up October twenty seventh, and it's gonna be down on the thirtieth. So, I think the thirtieth is that Friday uh, of what would be Jiho, but we don't have it. We're not having a real Jiho this year, so um, you got plenty of time. It ain't no partying going on, so um. The quiz will be up that Tuesday, the 27th, and 20, what, 27th, uh, 28th, 29th, 30th, that Friday. 
Uh, it'll, be, it'll be up until Friday at 11.59 p.m. Um, so uh, that's quiz two. Now in this class, remember you got two quizzes. The first one and this is the second one. Uh, so each one is worth, um, each quiz has 15 questions. So this quiz is coming up, has 15 multiple choice questions, each worth one point. Uh, so uh, you have 15 questions. So you can come out with a maximum of 15 points. Actually, I want to say I put a, get yeah, as extra credit question uh, attached at the end, uh, which is worth an additional five points. So you can go into the quiz and end up getting 20 out of 15. Um, so that's kind of in this class, that's where we kind of make up a little bit of extra credit. Of course, I also offer it with um, um, with uh, your attendance at certain programs and stuff like that. So for, for you guys that were at the other, you know, I think I've had two, the one I spoke at and then the one for the, depart the departmental uh, meeting, the full body meeting. Uh, so I, like I said, I took, I take down names and of course at the end of the semester, I'll tally everything up and give everyone their points. So you're not going to see your extra credit yet. Um, but as long as I got you on, on my on the rosters for those, those appearances and there will there'll be at least one more appearance before the end of the semester. Um, Cause I know on the 28th, we're doing the, um, the faculty student panel on the, on the Breonna Taylor case. Uh, so your attendance at that, um, um, will we'll essentially um, count, uh, give you five points. So of course, like we did the last one, just hit me on the on the DM on the uh, on the Zoom and just put your name in here. Hey, this is my name. I'm here, and I'll mark you down as as it happens. Um, I I was trying to I was trying to, in the last one I was trying to reply to everybody, but they were coming in so fast. I kind of quit replying and just marking everybody there. So as long as you sent me something saying you were there, I got you. Um, but uh, so that that's a that's that's I know I went off on a tangent, but that's another way to earn extra points. So um, like I said, you'll have 90 minutes to do 15 questions. So it's 15 questions, all multiple choice. You got 90 minutes. Um, there's no question that deals with anything you didn't learn in the book. Um, this isn't like my other class where I'm necessarily getting questions directly from uh, the website. Um, this time I got some of my questions from a separate test bank connected to the book for uh, for um, the uh, instructors, so I, I have the instructor's password for this online, uh, for the online site for this course. So I was, I was able to get questions. Uh, so they, so some of them may be some of the same questions, uh, but, they, but they may not be, but they are straightforward questions. None of the questions are, um, are real crazy. In other words, if you know, if you have an understanding of the reading in these chapters, you'll be fine. Um, so quiz two next week, uh, it'll be up at 7 a.m. Uh, on October 27th, and it'll be it'll it'll be down at op, uh, on Friday, October 30th, at 11:59 p.m. So, um, and like I said, we'll meet next week on the 27th anyway, even though it's not in our syllabus. Well, we don't we don't have so in other words, it, you don't have to be here. Um, you know, I'm not taking roll, but I will I will sign in and, and sit up if anyone has questions regarding the quiz or anything regarding chapters 11 through 12. So even though I'm already posting the lectures for 11 and 12, they'll be up tomorrow. Um, in case you guys have any more questions regarding 11 and 12, since they're gonna be on the quiz, um, since the quiz that will cover 11 and 12 as well, so seven through 12, um, I wanna make myself available if you guys have questions. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the assignments for the week. So like I said, um, 11 and 12, my lectures will be up tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Um, then next week, the quick quiz number two will be up uh, on the 27th. I will sign in on Zoom that night anyway. Um, even though we don't have a scheduled Zoom, um, I'll just be here anyway if you guys have questions. Um, but um, I've already pretty much gone over the quiz as much as I'm going to go over it. 15 questions, 90 minutes. Um, each question is worth one point. Um, and this chapter is 7 through 12. So are there any questions before we log out? Anything I need to touch on or any questions? Okay. Um, oh yeah, and after the quiz that following day, that, that Wednesday, I'm sorry, the 28th, then chapter 13 will be up as well. Uh, we do we uh, will not have class on November 30th. I mean, uh, November 3rd, because that is vote day. Um, so I'm hoping you guys, I can't tell you who to vote for, but I am gonna tell you to vote. Um, so do get out there. Um, you guys are criminal justice majors. You guys are, you know, 
you know, and, and uh, you guys are uh, essentially the, ed the educated portion of society now. You're in college and you're in a major that's very important. The criminal justice issues are essentially on the ballot without having to be on the ballot. Uh, and they're hot button issues in this country. So no matter what you think about it, these issues or what side you land on, um, you need to exercise your right to vote um, because it's, there are a lot of things that may not necessarily be on the ballot. Um, police brutality is not necessary and, and, and policing is not on the ballot, but it is on the ballot because of the differing opinions um, of, the, of the opposing sides in, in the presidential election. And not only that, you got uh, local elections, you got senatorial elections. Um, uh, so I don't know how many, many of you guys are doing absentee va ballots because you're not from, uh, you know, you haven't claimed uh, Greensboro as your permanent address. Um, so whatever you need to do to vote, um, I, was, I voted early, actually I voted yesterday. Um, try your best to vote early if you cannot. We, I mean, even, even though I'm, I'm considering November 3rd to be a national holiday, it's National Vote Day. So I won't be up here for a Zoom. Uh, and so I don't know what your other classes are doing, but you don't have to meet with me that week. Uh, it's gonna be all about getting your behind out and voting. Uh, so get, go ahead and get registered. Um, matter of fact, if you want to register here in Guilford County, uh, you can pretty much register to vote at, at the polling low at the, uh, early voting location. I think you can fill out the form there. Um, and so you can register to vote, to vote at pretty much any time. You just have to give them your address and they, they put you in the precinct, um, and, uh, let you know, so that, that lets you know who you're voting for, um, and whatever election dealing with your precinct or your, um, your zone. So um, that's pretty much it. I think that's a good, uh, a good number of announcements. Um, uh, October 28th is, okay, yeah, that, that, that's when the extra credit opportunity will, will uh, be posted. Uh, well, it'll be available for you to sign on uh, to the Zoom for the, um, the Breonna Taylor panel. So just uh, be on the lookout for that. I'll make announcements in every class. So you guys will see it. So for you guys that want extra credit, trying to overachieve, you might want to think about that. Um, but without further to, uh, further ado, I think no one has a question. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and end. Um, I think I got everyone that came in. Thank you. A lot. Uh, I'm, I'm getting an email from you, Alana. Will you? Um, Yeah, just send me that uh, screenshot, uh, Ms. Maddox, young Maddox. Okay, I just sent. Okay, I got you. All right, um, so uh, y'all take care, be good, and I'll see you guys, uh, I guess, next week if you guys have questions. Uh, so just remember, please, I don't want to hear no, that's what I don't want to hear. Um, no excuses about why you couldn't take the quiz on time. Um, you got a whole four days pretty much to take it. Just get your behind on there, take the quiz. Um, so I, I get, you have four days to take it. So there's no excuse. Why wait to the last day? Why not jump in there the first day or the second day? Um, so go ahead and get it done. Y'all be good. I have a question. How do you put um, the extra credit in Blackboard? Uh, what I do is I create another column um, and I, I, I cap the co I make the column 25 points as a cap. So I never give more than 25 points of extra credit uh, in any class. Um, you're automatically going to get extra credit for on the quizzes that you take and the quit on the quiz and the final. So there's an extra credit question on the final as well. So th those are automatically counted in that column, but anything extra like attending an event, um, I create an extra column for extra credit. Um, so I don't think I have to create it for this class, but once I create it, um, I'll put your total extra credit amount uh, in that column. So um, that's another thing. A lot of people get mixed up because they read they, to get the, they get they try to get their grade from Blackboard, and in doing so, so it, Blackboard won't allow me to create a column. It'll it will allow me to create a column and call it extra credit, but it doesn't count it like extra credit. So it counts it like everything counts. So that means it'll it'll give you a grade that's out of 125 points as opposed to a grade that's out of 100 points with an extra 25. So um, you may get 100 out of 125, but it'll look like you made an 80 or something like that, you know, 80% or B in the class. So you're great, you're at that. So I use Blackboard to, to allow you guys to see your points, how many points you have. So Blackboard is only used to give you your points. It's not used to give you your grade. 
Uh, but of course, if you know your points and then you know the plus minus grading scale, you know what your grade will be. Uh, I never I, I never give anyone uh, below what they deserve. Now, sometimes I give people above what they deserve based upon how the rest of class grades. Um, so I kind of curve, I only curve up, I don't really curve down. So I only help people, I don't hurt people. Uh, so um, if you get uh, 80 um, and you say, wow, that's a C, uh, but you, you might get a B, but you definitely won't get a D, okay? <laughs> so you're gonna get, uh, so, they'll, so knowing what your points are, that'll let you accurately be able to know at least what grade you deserve. Um, as opposed to what grades you may get, which may end up being better. Um, so just pay attention to Blackboard for your points and your actual grade is gonna be in Aggie Access. So does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right, everybody be good. Dr. Boyce, did you get my uh, the screenshot that I had emailed to you a little while okay. ago? Because I know I sent it kind of, um, I don't wanna say kind of like late, but I didn't send it like right when I took it. Yeah, I got you. And who who was the other person that just um yeah I got I got Alana as well. She just she just uh let me see I think I already got her anyway. Let me see. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Boyce. You. So you're good you're good Miss Orr and that was the Justice Not Served panel, right? Yes, thank you. I got you. Anybody else? All right, take care.